What can we learn on pollution from the COVID lockdowns? In this video, I'm going to answer these questions using the latest results from our very recently published paper in a top journal in environment. The conclusion of this paper is a message of hope, is a message that we don't need to kill half of humanity to save our planet. It shows that we have the key in our hands. If you think that the answer is obvious, well, actually it's not. And our paper shed light on two very important aspects to answer properly these questions. First, we are able to quantify the size of its effect, the magnitude by how much pollution is reduced, and not only saying it's reduced. Second, we also show if the effect is uniform on the globe or not. Now, let's see together our results and why they are useful for our generation as well as the generations to come. The situation was unique. Of course, before we could already infer the impact of human activity on pollution worldwide. But this time, it was not only inference, we could really observe what happened with what we call a natural experiment. Different places in the world, at different points in time, came to a stop. And we could observe properly what's the effect of the reduction of human activity on pollution worldwide. To measure this effect, we needed two main elements. First, data on lockdowns. We already had those for our first projects. Second, we needed data on pollution. So we decided to focus on arguably one of the most deadly air pollutants in the world, what we call PM 2.5, the particles that are smaller or equal to 2.5 micrometers in diameters. And those very small particles on solely in 2015 were responsible to approximately 4 million deaths. Then we built a statistical model to disentangle the effect of lockdowns on pollution from all other potential confounding factors, as for example, population density, seasonality, the geography, and many other different factors. Our results were undeniable. We witnessed a massive reduction of this pollutant associated with the lockdowns. We observed a reduction of approximately 40% of this pollutant. Of course, it takes approximately a month to see this reduction taking place. It's like if you light a fire, you still have smoke a bit after the fire is stopped. So it's the same, you still have those particles and it takes a while to clean up the air. But the results was there. And this is why it's a message of hope. We observed that it was possible to reduce by almost half the quantity of this very deadly pollutant by reducing human activity. But we didn't kill half of the population. We didn't went on a different planet. We stayed here, we just reduced our activity. And of course, it was absolutely dramatic, very costly for many, for their economic activity, for some sectors, economic sectors. But it revealed that with most of the economic activity still working, but slightly differently, we could impact dramatically pollution together. Then we also look at how this effect varied on the globe. Was it uniform or was there any differences in different places. And surprisingly or not, we witnessed that it was actually not the same everywhere. And some places had even increase in pollution. This is the second very important result, leading to the following conclusion. There is no policy fit for every situation on the planet. We have to adapt on the different countries, depending on the source of pollution and on the different type of industry and human activity. 
Of course, in some places it increased. If you think, you take the example of India, for example, if you lock people at home, potentially they use you, or they will burn more biofuel in a less efficient way, polluting more if they are at home, that's working or displacing in their country. Other situations can arise. For example, if we think about Switzerland, the public transportation is very efficient and relatively green. So if you compare at the situation during the lockdown, I could really remember that the trains, the metro, the buses were empty, but everyone was stuck in their car in very long queue on the roads, alone in their car because they didn't want to meet other people. But this is a side effect proper to the pandemic. Right? Most of the policy to help reducing pollution and tackle pollution will never recommend you to take the car alone. It's really just a side effect. So actually, it might be even possible to do better. Of course, now we need more research to properly define the policies fitting for different places in the world. But we have this very encouraging message that we are able to reduce dramatically pollution. We have the key and we have to share this information, share those results as much as we can to spread knowledge and to encourage people to continue researching and finding now solutions.